Hi, it's Adam with Small Town Machine Shop. Today we're going to make some more progress on this little three-phase power setup. I went to Home Depot, got some electrical outlets and boxes of wire. Uh, I could have gone to an electrical supply shop. It would have all been cheaper, but I didn't have time this week. So today's plan is to get this mounted to the panel. We'll clean off that edge, start doing the beginning of the wiring, and see how far we get. I've been super busy, so... Uh, pet projects like this have been on the back burner, but I want to get this going. So let me get some tools and get some stuff organized and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've got stuff laid out. So I think all I'm going to do is trim this little tab off right here and uh, round that corner off and then I'll probably go from the point there and cut that off. It It'd be perfectly fine leaving it there. You could even mount this on, you know, a piece of plywood if you wanted to. So, I'll get the saw, and we'll dress this guy up. And then we'll bolt the uh, motor down. Or the uh, VFD, rather. And, yeah. Then we'll start messing with some of the electrical. Okay, so that cleaned up, took all the sharp edges off there, cut that edge off there, and all that. Again, project, shop projects like this are function over form for me. I, I am so crazy busy right now. I just I want to get this done. I don't want to, I mean, look at what it is. So Another thing, uh, you saw me cut that with a hacksaw, and I use the saws all over here. If, you're, if you don't know... Be careful using a uh, abrasive cutoff wheel or anything on aluminum. Aluminum on can load the wheel, and that can make them dangerous. They can overheat. They can shatter. So they do make cutting wheels just for aluminum. So I would go that way. Even for small cuts, just go ahead and get one. And then uh, flap wheels are fine. That's how I cleaned it up, which is a flap wheel. But be very, if, if you don't know, be very careful cutting aluminum with any kind of abrasive wheel okay so now and then i took their hose and really blew this out because there was aluminum dust in there and aluminum is conductive so now we'll take this guy figure out where we want it and that's looking it's looking pretty good right there this aluminum will also act as uh, kind of a heat sink. I'm going to put a separate fan above this. These cheap VFDs, keep them cool. If you keep these cool, nice airflow through them, they'll last twice as long. I work with lots of VFDs at work. And especially on higher end models, you'll notice the cooling is a lot more, uh, you know, a key feature in some of those higher ones. So... Any extra air you can feed this thing, it will love. Because the capacitors get hot and all that other stuff. So, we'll take our punches here. Go eyeball level. I will center punch these if I... I might have to... Yeah, it's a little tight in there. We'll see. So I'll get uh, this punched, and I'll drill and tap these holes, and uh, we'll go from there. And I might show you that. People wanted to see more of the process, so I'm showing you more of the process. Okay. Okay. So I didn't have a normal uh, transfer punch long enough. So I'm taking a square, butting it against the side of the aluminum, getting that about where I want it. And then there's just enough room. We'll rest that against this groove here. Hold on, I need a tripod's a little in the way here, so let me shift here a bit. It's lined up. Looking good. Down a bit. Push it all the way in. You guys can look at my arms. Yeah, there's that one. 
Same thing, just butting it up in this groove. You can see this cut out here. That'll space it off the... And there we go. Now I'll turn around and do the same thing on the other side. Another way you could do it, if you didn't have a, a punch, is just line it up wherever you were going to do it. I lost it. Oh, there we go. Then just take a scribe and make your little marks there. That's another way to do it. Okay, let me get this uh, drilled and tapped. Okay, now we're tapping the holes. And again, you can tap in aluminum. Use the stuff, you know, for aluminum. So it doesn't make a gummy mess. And I will proceed to the other holes. Okay, so we made some good progress as far as we're going to make it today. So as you can see, the thing is now all mounted. I have two of the outlets wired in. Now, if you, if you do something like this, it's what you're going to want to make sure is when you wire these in, is that anything you plug into here will be the same. So go here here there we go continuity the ground are the same that way you don't plug something in here and it goes backwards i almost contemplated wiring this one different and you know i'd paint the color blue or something like that because uh like the big Le uh, leblon doesn't have a reverse that way I can just swap plugs if I, for some reason, wanted to spin it backwards. Yeah, very cool. So all I have left to do is get a power cord. And I need some more wire for that. Run the wires down from here into the box. And I'm probably going to put a riser on this one because, uh, you know, have extra room for the, the ground wire and everything. The outlets I'm using the ground is bonded to the uh, straps so as you see if I touch this ground wire here and touch anywhere on it you hear that but I'm still going to run a ground wire I'm still running ground wires from the lug to each box I you know a lot of grounds is nice so yeah very cool now 
this setup is very small and compact. And I know, you know, I got some comments on the last one about, oh, just have a, use a rotary converter. Well, I have a rotary converter. I'm actually getting ready to upsize it. But let's say you're renting a place, you know, and they don't want you getting into the breaker and adding breakers and stuff like that. And you could look how small this is. And they'll just have a power cord coming off it that'll plug into a welder outlet. You can have something this small mounted on the wall, and you could run good sized machines with it. With just this small of a footprint. And I'm actually going to test this when I get the opportunity. I have a my gas powered welder is 220. And I'm gonna see if I can power something in the field with this. Uh, you know, if I go to like test a machine or whatnot. But look, look how little room this takes up. And you could run three machines off this. Small machines. And remember, this is just going to be a power source. All the motor starting and all that's going to be done on the machines themselves. This is just going to put out the power to the outlets. So I'm not going to use this to turn on and off machines or any of that. All the mag starters and all that and everything is still on them. So this will just be powering these outlets. Okay, well, that's probably enough for today. This is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.